Welcome to the Nerikanard Flight Companion Hub, a tool that lets you build your own profiles for the Stream Deck add-on Flight Tracker to make your flights more immersive. In this demo, you'll see how I fly the C310 using the Flight Companion Hub. But first, let's just have a look at the profile's different assets. In the Assets folder, you'll see numerous readouts of your aircraft's different gauges and sensors. You can either use it as a full overview of your engine, everything from fuel flow to your EGT, or control the different parts of your aircraft. All the light switches, autopilot controls and ATC buttons are mapped and ready for you to copy inside your own Flight Companion Hub profile. You can also create your own interactive checklist. Just select the checklist folder in Assets and you're good to go. Under Guides, you'll find useful links for the Flight Tracker GitHub, the different SimConnect events and values, and of course links to the official SDK. In the Official Profiles folder, you'll find My Works. For today's demo, I'm going to use the C310 profile that I created. The C310 profile shares a lot of common parts with my other profiles. It comes with an overview of your most important gauges and the possibility to control your autopilot with the Stream Deck. More of that later. Every flight, of course, starts with a startup, so let's run through the startup checklist. In the Engines folder, you'll find a great overview of your aircraft. The manifold pressure is visible here, so is the cylinder head temperature, the prop RPM, oil pressure and the EGT. You can also fine-tune your prop and mixture levers here. The comms and frequencies folder lets you interact with the ATC in an easy way. Truly, by pushing buttons and changing frequency, you do feel more immersed. You also have a quick link to the navigation folder to quickly access your tools to follow the ATC's guidance. You can press any of your COM and NAV channels to change your standby frequency. Transfer between the two by simply holding either COM1, COM2, NAV1 or NAV2 down. You can of course interact with the radio and your frequencies in your selected aircraft. Everything will change according to what you do, no matter if you push it on the Stream Deck or in your aircraft, or for that matter, any other third-party add-on or flight instrument. As you can see, all the gauges on the stream deck are moving, all the readouts are moving according to what's happening in the aircraft. Of course, you have a pre-takeoff checklist also. Doors are closed, windows are closed. Peter, we don't need to care about right now. We have our prop full forward. And as you can see, I am right now trimming the aircraft and going flaps down. The flap readings are zero to 100. So for example, if you have three steps on your flaps, step one will be 33%, step two will be 66 and so on. All right, ready to go. As you can see, the gauges are moving with the aircraft again, airspeed coming up, and you can see the prop RPM and the manifold pressure is actually in the reds. It's okay during takeoff, but the uh, different red lines are according to the plane's POH. So make sure that you read the aircraft that you're going to do your own profiles to, so you don't run the engines too hot without knowing. Aiming 
for that 107 climb rate as you can see a number that you can find in the takeoff folder and you're going to see me start to come back on the throttle and on the prop pretty soon and those numbers will come down and be uh, yellow so the prop is down the manifold pressure coming down to 24 now and the prop rpm is down to 2400 in the autopilot folder you get your autopilot controls and these work as you might imagine you have your altitude vertical speed heading and then two different modes nav and approach you also have an engage button to engage the autopilot by increasing the vertical speed or altitude you can change the different altitude and vertical speed of your aircraft you can also use the heading mode to turn your left and right according to heading that you got from the atc to activate the different modes just push the vertical speed altitude heading nav or approach modes So coming in on approach really shows the strength of the stream deck. Uh, right now I am uh, typing in the right frequencies for the for the tower that we are going to, and we're gonna go get a lot of instructions here where we need to go between the autopilot folder and the ATC folder. And having everything in front of you, you can uh, just have a good overview of how your aircraft is behaving and get a good readout if it's anything you are actually missing. So as you can see, I'm switching between the two folders. Uh, I'm also going to go into the camera folder to change my view. Um, and right now, I can see that I am dropping airspeed. As you can see, I'm down to 114, 113. That's getting a bit too low. And I don't have the readings in front of me in the aircraft, but I do see them on the stream deck. So I, as you can see, I am starting to increase my throttle right now because I just saw in front of me that oh, the speed is a little bit too low. So you have a better overview and it's also a little bit more fun to fly this way because you're actually looking down on your on your you know desk to see different parts of your aircraft and I really enjoy it. This is the uh, landing checklist so fuel selectors are right, fuel uh, pump is too low, mixture is coming to as required and the props go full forward. I'm a little bit early with all this right now as you can see my speed is way too high so I can even go to to the flaps to the uh, right level but there's a pre-landing um, checklist and also an after landing checklist that we will do when we get down. During the landing phase, I usually work from the main page of the profile because that way I can see my airspeed, I can see my manifold pressure, and I can also see the trim that I have on my aircraft. A lot of times I'm uh, actually doing it by the numbers, not by feel, which is kind of bad, but you get a good feel of how it's supposed to feel. And um, a lot of times when I land without the stream deck, it actually... Um, looks a little bit worse which is kind of worrying for my real life flying <laughs> There we go, everything's all right. Going into our after landing checklist, flaps are retracted, cowl flaps are open, our fuel pumps are too, set to low, mixture coming to lean, and we are going to go for landing lights off. And landing checklist is complete. And that's kind of how you fly with the uh, 
Flight Companion Hub. I really enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it too. And I really hope that you are going to create your own profiles for your favorite planes. I've created a bunch of them, but a lot of people are coming to me with uh, with different um, ideas of what plane I should do it for for the next time. And I've bought a lot of planes just to create this for you guys. So now I just want to give you this tool to let you create whichever profile you want for whatever plane you want. Um, you can, of course, just control C, control V from my profile, but just look at the numbers and see to it that you have the right uh, right numbers before you go out flying. This is the ch uh, shutdown um, checklist. I really enjoy shutting the aircrafts down after a good flight and I wanted to include a correct um, checklist for the shutdown. Mainly because the C310 also have a safe state, so it actually starts up as you leave it and because of that you of course want to leave it in a in a good state where you know that it will work the next time too anyhow thank you so much for watching this and i hope you'll enjoy the the flight companion hub there will come a lot of updates let me know if there is something you'd like to change um, but have fun creating your own profile and uh, let me know where which plane you're creating to it will be a blast to download them and uh, if you have questions you'll find me on flightsim.to thank you bye